how's it going gears welcome back to the channel and the series as we carry on down this road to seriously 5.0 this week we will be diving into atrium one of the escape tile maps atrium is a very small map but is also quite unique as it contains a bunch of relic weapons on the map itself i will cover these as well as the general map layout including energy that locations before moving on to the mutators and build that i had when tackling this map there will be a full run through later on in the video, so there will be timestamps and chapters available if you just want to skip ahead. We will start with the map layout for Atrium and it looks like this, taken straight from the in-game map. Your fabricator spawns in this room just here, being the first thing you need to interact with to get your horde match started. Spread around the central area of Atrium there are 5 possible energy tap locations and you will find them in these locations. Here I would normally tell you that there are two ammo boxes for your team to make use of each wave but Atrium is one of the few maps that contains three and you can find them in these spots. As I mentioned earlier Atrium is quite unique in the fact that it contains relic weapons on the map but these are given to you and your team as you progress through the waves. These three rooms will open up one by one and each contains a random assortment of relic weapons and a level 4 weapon locker so make sure you are utilizing these as they become available now let's cover the options you have for setting up a base on atrium this map doesn't have any area names but i would say there are only three different contenders for base locations there isn't really a center build per se so we will be looking at building in the eastern area of atrium and work through the other spots after that Setting up in the easternmost area of Atrium would involve this area just here. You are kind of cramped together in this small room, meaning a boom shot or drop shot cyan could easily ruin your run. Your engineer will not need a lot of energy to get going here, but make sure you have plenty of fortifications, since enemies are going to get quite close quite often. Bosses will be difficult here, since your sight lines aren't great so you may want to consider pushing out further to give your team a better chance. Bring a good mixed range of classes to the spot and hope that you get the energy tap that spawns just outside your base. If you do, you have a good chance of beating Horde in this spot as it's 3 out of 5 in terms of difficulty. Let's head over to the western side of Atrium and consider setting up a base in this area. Here you have the height advantage since it's the most elevated space we can access on this map making this spot ideal for certain classes. You will be able to overlook the rest of the map and there will only be a couple of lanes in and out of your base. Your engineer will need to spend a bit more energy in this spot, not by much though. So make sure you are donating since energy tap locations aren't ideal when you set up here. Team does have much more space to move around, much better sight lines and space to manoeuvre, making boss encounters easier in this location. Longer range classes are definitely more favourable here, but if your team wants to make use of the free weapon lockers and relic weapons, you are positioned far away from these. So, make sure you down an enemy at the end of a wave to give yourselves plenty of time to grab these. Your team should have a good shot of beating Horde in this spot as it sits at 3 out of 5 for difficulty as well. My final recommended area for this map is the southern area where you and your team will spawn into Atrium this area just here. Most people will default to this area since the fabricator spawns in this spot and your base will contain the free relic weapons and weapon lockers when they do spawn in. Your team will often push out to the outer edges of this base area meaning your engineer will need to build even more fortifications here. Since your team will likely spread through this whole area each tap can be well defended giving your team much more energy to play with. Shorter range classes are ideal here, though Marksman and Nomad can be effective if you position yourself well. Bosses can be a slight issue if they do get inside your base, so make sure you keep the deadlier bosses outside or you will spend a lot of time fixing your base up. Work as a team and you should be Atrium in this spot and it's not too difficult sitting at only 2 out of 5. For my playthrough, my team did default to building a base in the southern area next to the relic weapon rooms. And here are the mutators we had to play around as well. Only regen in cover. This mutator can be a little troublesome, 
since you need to remain in cover or you will not regenerate any damage you take. Certain classes can get around this, but staying in cover is normally your best option. More lethal. Enemies will deal more damage while this mutator is active, but you should be used to seeing this one, especially if you play on Master. Must active reload. Quite an annoying mutator. Not only must you hit an active to successfully reload, your character will not automatically start the reload process upon emptying your clip. Make sure you count your bullets or at least keep an eye on the top right of your screen. More health. Enemies will take much more damage to kill while this mutator is active. You should get used to seeing this, especially if you play on Master. Bobblehead enemies. Purely a cosmetic mutator, growing the heads of all enemies. Headshots become a little more difficult to hit since enemy hitboxes aren't modified to hit their new body shape, so aim for the lower half of the head. Regeneration. Make sure you finish off your enemies or else they will regenerate all of their health. Bosses will be a pain with this mutator active, so leaving bosses to be one of the last enemies you deal with isn't a bad idea. Survivor. This one is active all of the time, especially on mass difficulty will not be allowed to restart a wave if you fail, so make sure you and your team are prepared. These mutators didn't exclude any classes, instead focusing more on buffing enemies and trying to be more of an inconvenience for us. To beat this map, I decided to play as the anchor, taking on the tank aspect more for this one. Here are the skill cards I took with me. Harness Energy. This card allows me to generate stim for myself and my teammates whilst enemies are shooting at my barrier ultimate ability. Harness Energy is also a soft counter to the only regen in cover mutator as it will grant health instead of stim if a teammate isn't already at full health. Barrier Battery Since my barrier is being used to protect myself and my team, as well as granting some regeneration, I want to make it last for longer. So, Barrier Battery is perfect for this. At maximum rank, this card gives the anchor an extra 12 seconds on their barrier. In your face all tank classes have a card giving them the ability to taunt enemies. The anchors one requires hitting enemies in the head. With this taunting, I can guarantee that enemies will shoot my barrier when I decide to use it. Barrier boost. Getting a bigger shield also means it will be an easier target to generate stim and protect my team. Both of these are absolute positives. This shield is wide enough at max rank to cover an entire corridor, meaning my whole team can shoot through it and nobody should take damage from that direction. Bloody Shot. Not wanting to be completely without damage, Bloody Shot is here to give me some bleeding damage on my active Baltox shots. Since we have to active reload anyway, this seemed like a no-brainer. Everything about Atrium, the mutators and skill cards has now been covered. Let's show the full uninterrupted gameplay. I hope you enjoy.
Energy collected. That won't be the last of them. Get ready. My ammo now. Alright, what's up guys? Today we're doing another Horde Frenzy, this time on Atrium. I am playing as the Anchor. And the build, as well as the Mutators, are going to be at the start of the video as they normally are. I have with me a veteran, a mechanic, a striker, and a infiltrator. But this is quite a small map. You get three weapon lockers in the back, which is always helpful, along with the some of the relic weapon variants. I don't know, I can't remember what the relic weapon marks it actually does. Need a bit of ammo regen, a little bit of damage, a little bit more ammo regen. I can be quite greedy with this map because obviously you don't need to buy weapon lockers. It's a very small map as well so you don't need a lot of fortifications in general. There we go, that worked out. Energy collected. Sweet. My ammo now. Oh yeah. 
and the rest of that over. And then what have we got over here? What does a long shot relic do as well? I forget. That is hurting. What even happened to that other warden? I didn't actually see it. Target. Dealt with the first one, and then the second one just disappeared. Just what I needed. Now that is a headshot. Huh? Energy collected. Energy tap upgraded. All clear. Nice, we got a decent tap. Ah, oh, we lost the tap. Oh well. Ooh, that hurts. Quickly get this back and then we can kill the last enemy. Shots missing. I have no idea what these relic weapons are doing anymore. It's been a long time since I've used them properly. Deployed. Yes. 
There you go. I might put a few extra points into crit damage, a few points into damage, and a uh, single point into damage, a few into crit damage, and then be done with it. I'm not really here as the main damage dealer. And I have been quite greedy so far, I reckon. Oh, I thought that was going to get me. You're okay. Whoa. Good to go. Let's run away. That was a uh, very sketchy. Done. If the uh, let's get this tap first. Nope. Energy tap is full. Never mind. So many people, people play. Yeah, there's so many people playing as Kate in this one. It's hard to tell who's who. Right, go with a little bit of extra damage, a little bit of crit damage, and then be done. Oh yeah, this gives you a double shot, doesn't it? Oh, everyone's down. Ow. Oh, wow. That thing absolutely obliterated me. Still got all the taps. Nice. If you guys are liking these videos, then uh, be sure to give it a like down below, leave a comment. Uh, let me know what clash you want to see on which particular map, and I will try to uh, do that if I've not already done that map, obviously. I'm trying to just cover each of these a single time. Let's get 
target. Oh, second boss wave, I didn't actually realise. Ooh, snatch a matriarch, that can be a bit nasty on this map. quite have enough ammo regen to deal with that. Ah, oh, you're kidding me. Well, that worked out. That went fairly well considering. I can't believe I did over 300,000 damage though. I've got a bit of a tanky build. <laughs> Pretty much hold this side down on my own. On Nearly. Ooh, that hurts though. We did lose a tap, but it's not the end of the world. Energy tap upgraded. In fact, this engineer's got 26,000 he's not spent. I might be even greedier. But with a few extra perks, up that damage a bit. Yeah, screw it, let's do that. Give him the rest. One thing I can do. Put that there, just in case. 
The um, veterans using the relic retro lancer, which has the explosive shells on it. That is hilarious. Wow, everyone's down. That got very, very messy. Before this round ends, if you guys are struggling to do any particular maps, I do stream these on Tuesdays, so make sure you come and join in. That way I can help you do any particular maps that you're struggling with, help you guys through the daily. And we are almost an affiliate on Twitch as well, so I can start doing some stupid stuff that I've got planned in the good old noggin. Stuff to mix it up a little bit. extra crit damage. Play so what jump on an extra bit of regen. I have been very greedy with perks, but this map offers a lot. Imagine doing this on a wait on fifty waves with Jack as well. Jeez. 
You could have the entire map covered in barriers. And that's how that one's done. If you have watched all the way to the end, then I thank you very much for watching. It's at this point that I have been keeping track of all the maps that have been completed on this series using this little visual aid. Atrium is our 11th map, so let's go ahead and cross that one off. We still have a while to go, but I'm definitely going to keep pace with these videos, so we will be coming to an end of this series before we know it. Anyway, as always, guys, take it easy, and I will catch you in the next one.